Welcome back to another episode of Sean's Stance, where we will tell you why your view is not the judge's view and how you can fix that. But before we get started, make sure that you subscribe, like, and comment. Turn on that notification bell so you know when these videos go live. And we are doing a YouTube giveaway. So the more that you comment, subscribe, the more that you are entered. Uh, just keep sharing this channel. And every time we hit a new 100 subscribers, we are going to give out a free hour of posing to somebody on our subscribers list that is participating in the comment section so keep those comments going keep this interaction going and i really appreciate all your support already and let's get into it and as we're waiting for everyone to join if you would like to work with me suitsandposing.com is where you have to go we do hair makeup suits and posing all the fun stuff for competing for women tonight's topic which is your view is not the judge's view this is, we're gonna tackle this from a couple different places, okay? So the first thing is, uh, if you have been on my YouTube channel, then you saw the review of the Legion Sports Fest and watch the videos and love your lipstick. Thank you, this is one of my Cutie Beauty Cosmetics. This is Smother. This is Smother that I have on right now. One of my lipsticks. Thank you. Um, so if you saw the Legion's wrap up, then you saw that the camera angle was a little bit different for that particular uh, video. How many of you guys actually went and watched the wrap up of Legions? Because we did the review on Monday, and then yesterday I edited the live portion with the live stream. So the view that we got from the Legions replay. Put that, uh, put some of the comparisons in, put the individuals in, that kind of thing. And um, the promoters of this show I think they actually had a really good idea with this. Um, they put the camera in the position of the judges, right? So the actual camera was low, looking up, which is what the judges see, right? Um, what I'd like to see them do next time, this is as, as a note, instead of having the wide angle lens, I'd like to see them just zoom in on that particular uh, camera angle and just focus on the competitor that's on stage. I think that would be helpful because the way that the actual camera angle was set up, it was hard to see uh, see, the, see the lines, things like that on the, on the girls. Uh, but it was a good concept and I like this concept because it shows you how different it looks when you are down here looking up as a judge versus what you see yourself looking straight ahead. One of the biggest mistakes that a lot of competitors make is they pose themselves in the mirror. How many of you guys actually pose yourselves in the mirror? When you're at the gym, when you're you know doing your posing, you check your poses in the mirror. Everybody does it, everybody does it. Everybody checks their, themselves in the mirror. Well, that's great and everything, but the judges aren't eye level with you. The judges are below you. They're below you. So they're seeing a different view. So that's why for somebody who feels like they're not really bending over in their back pose, pose that much, to the judges, they actually are. That's why you have to stand up so tall because the judges are down there looking up, okay? So you may be thinking, I'm not bending over my back pose. Yeah, you are. From their vantage point, yeah, you are. <laughs> and they're seeing things that they don't need to see. They don't need to judge. Trust me when I tell you that I have seen those things being at the judge's table. I used to be a judge, not anymore. I used to be, I used to be a judge and stand up. <laughs> Let me just say stand up because the judges see a different view, okay? So you have to take that into account. So this is what I, this is what I explain to my opposing clients and things like that when you are actually taking, uh, figuring out your progress and figuring out how you're coming with your poses. Set your phone up on a you know, tripod or a ring light or whatever and set it to be waist, from where the waistline to the knee level, somewhere in between there, between, between your waistline to your knees or knees to your waist, you want that, that's where you want that phone or camera to sit, okay? And have it focusing up at you because that will give you a more true view of what your physique looks like from the judge's angle, right? Versus going straight on. Like right now, my phone is straight on to me, right? If I was to stand up, a little different, right? You're seeing something a little bit different right now. You're not seeing my face, you're seeing something a little different. Same thing with the judges, right? It's the same thing with the judges. And figure, is it common to see the girls 
Yahoo as well. No, because the legs are together, figure. The legs are together. So you don't ever spread your legs, really. <laughs> Unless you're doing like a power pose in one of your model turns or something like that when you're when you're doing your individual. So no, that's not really a thing. However, figure girls make the same, same mistake. Figure girls gotta get even more flexible in their lower back than bikini girls do because they gotta get their back to come back towards the judges, right? So if we're looking at it from a side angle and you're a figure girl, Let's just say that you're standing here as a figure girl, right? And you're in your back pose and the judges are back are back down there. Well, your back is really far away from the judges, right? So you've actually got to tilt that lower back to get the glutes up and pull the upper back back towards them in order to make the back look bigger. So it's actually even more critical that figure girls do that kind of thing, right? Now, since I'm in this position, if we're thinking, talking about bikini or even wellness too, wellness, they don't really want you bending over either. So you need a little bit more in wellness than I have in bikini, but let me tell you, wellness, you guys need to stand up too. Stand up, and I'll tell you in a minute why. <laughs> so if you're here as a bikini girl, I'm standing up nice and tall. So the judges are seeing a really balanced X frame right here. Now if I bend even just a little bit, guess what they're seeing? Guess what they're seeing right now? Just guess. You already know. So stand up tall and just tilt right here. That's it, okay? Do you wanna see from the judge's angle, they're gonna see a full X frame, they're gonna see your, your shoulders up top, okay? What am I missing? Okay, um, same thing with wellness. Now for wellness, now again, they don't really wanna see an, an X frame in wellness for the upper body, they wanna see um, more lower body. But what a lot of people don't realize is that when you bend over, this flattens out. The top of your glutes flattens out. So I don't know if you can see that here on this live feed or not, but when I stand up, my glutes round out. See how much rounder they are right here? But as soon as I start to bend, they flatten. So a lot of girls really take away from their shape when they bend because it pushes and flattens the glutes. Stand up. Stand up. Uh, it's the same thing from the front pose too, right? I hear this all the time, right? Girls think that they need more glutes, so they push into the hip more. Well, what does that do? That squishes the glute from the front. Squishes everything, squishes your waistline, everything. So again, I think about a judge looking down, from down below you looking up. The taller that you can get, the smaller your waistline's gonna look, okay? So again, if I'm standing here, and you guys are you guys are a little higher than where I would put you if you were a, if you were a judge. I would put you lower if I was actually doing progress photos right now. But you're right here versus squishing. When you squish, now I look unbalanced. Now my lower half looks way bigger than my upper half, right? So I need to stand up, make that waistline nice and tight and tiny, right? That's the view that you want the judges to have of you, not squishing everything down, right? Same thing in figure, when you're up front, I always tell the girls you wanna push that pelvis back because when you do that, the waistline comes in. If you're right here, it makes the waistline look thicker. When you go back, it makes the waistline look smaller. What does that do? That exaggerates your X shape when you're in your, in your front pose, here versus here. Look at how boxy I look, pull it back, get that waistline to come in. It's all about how you, you make your body actually look to the judges. It's not what you see. It's what they see below you, right? <laughs> I like the little mind blown, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Sometimes by posing in the mirror and posing at the gym and things like that, you are really doing yourself a disservice because you are looking at yourself from a different perspective than what the judges are looking at you from. So again, to combat this, set up your phone, set up your camera, whatever it may be, Anywhere from your waist level, hip level, down to your knees, right? Bodybuilding is an illusion, 100%. Bodybuilding is absolutely an illusion. It absolutely is. It's what you show the judges that matters, not what you have. <laughs> if you don't show it to them, then they can't see it, whether it's good or bad, right? So remember that what you are seeing is not what the judges are seeing, okay? It's different. I also wanted to tackle this from one other perspective. 
One of the number one things that I have to combat with my posing clients is they are always trying to overcompensate for a weakness. So for example, if I have a posing client who thinks she needs to have more glutes, what's she gonna do? She's gonna push those glutes towards me. Doesn't work like that. I'm looking for shape. I'm looking for overall balance, right? I just had this conversation with one of my clients tonight. So same thing that we were just talking about with the squishing thing. She was pushing into the hip like this to try and make her glutes look bigger. Well, her upper body's already small. So what did this do? This made her upper body look even smaller by doing that. I said, no, 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 you need to stand up because as soon as you stand up, that pulls your waistline in and it makes you look balanced from top to bottom, okay? When you push like this because you think you need more glutes, it does the exact opposite of what I actually want to see as a posing coach or as a judge. I want to see balance from top to bottom. I don't want to see you try to accentuate or make up for something that you think you lack, right? Same thing we're talking about. Again, we'll go with the front poses and minimizing a thick waistline, right? A lot of girls think in order to minimize a thick, thick waistline, they got to go all the way sideways. Nope, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so let me see. If I'm in my front pose here and I'm all, all the way sideways, that's about as far as I can twist in my upper body. Okay, I'm looking pretty straight up and down right now. So instead, we bring you just a little bit more open in the hip, just a touch, just a touch more open in the hip. And guess what? Now I can pull my upper body around a little bit more. And I look more like an X frame now versus looking really straight. And now my waistline looks thick. Now I can get a V. Now I can get a V taper. Simple little adjustments like that can take you from looking like you have this really thick waistline that you're trying to minimize by going sideways. It's actually making you look thicker. This is why having somebody who has a good eye to fix these things for you is important, right? Let me see. Or someone who needs more shoulders. They scrunch their shoulders up to exaggerate. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everything that I had to deprogram. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Can you show that for a figure of the tiny waist for the side pose? It's the same thing. So, and, and this is gonna be different too because you may need to position your legs a little bit differently. So, you know, if you're doing your model turn, there's not a whole lot you can do that's different in your quarter turns. So in your quarter turns, you can adjust your foot placements a little bit by moving your, moving your, your feet a little to make your, weight, your legs look bigger, bigger. If you make your legs look bigger, it's gonna make your waistline look smaller right? And then the twist here. There's not a whole lot you can do to change that in your, um, in your quarter turns versus just getting really flexible, being able, being able to tilt. And in order to make that waistline look smaller, you're going to have to make this chest look bigger and the legs look bigger, right? Model turns, you can adjust it a little bit better, a little bit. You can make, you can make the illusion a little bit better by adjusting where you put your foot placement. Some girls with their model turns, I will pull them more straight on because that helps them with that illusion a little bit better, gets them a little bit wider through that upper body. For other ones, I'll put them a little bit more, a little bit more to the side. Like for me, this would be better. This would not. For somebody else who's a little bit smaller through here and they can go out with that width, that width through their upper body, they can come a little bit more straight on in that model turn. For me, it would be more here. So I can twist and make the waist on look small, right? It would be a little bit different, right? I think I missed a comment. Hang on, I missed something. Oh, I got it. Okay. So again, where you're the one that's focusing on your weakness, the thing that you think is bad. So you try to overcompensate for that. You need somebody with an eye that can look at you and tell you, no, that's not what you should be doing because you're just drawing attention to it or something along that line. Or you're actually not doing what you think you're doing, right? You have a waistline of a teen boy. Very good. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> I actually don't have a small waistline, but I've grown, so it makes it look smaller, but thank you. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Making me laugh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's all about knowing your angles. And again, if you don't, if you can't get outside of your head, which most competitors can't when they're actually in prep and things like that, they can't get out of their own way. You know, they focus on the things that they're, they're weak at. They focus on the things that are wrong that they want to make better versus someone like myself who really focuses on creating that illusion for you is looking at ways to make your whole frame look better 
your whole frame look more balanced, right? Going back to the the uh, the example that I used with the tilting of the pelvis and pushing into the glutes, you know, that doesn't really help. If you are lacking in glutes, pushing into it is not going to help, right? We just want to display what you have, make it look like it's sitting up nice and high and tight, and then we're good. But if you squish into it, it's actually going to make your glutes look flat. That's the first thing. And it's going to make your upper body look smaller, which we don't want to do if you're already slight on your upper body. You got to have an overall X frame or S curve, right? This was a question that was brought up because bikini is looking more for the S curve versus the X frame. And what that comes down to is how you V in from your shoulder into your waistline and then into the glutes. All of the other divisions are really looking more for an X besides wellness. Wellness is looking for more, uh, more on the bottom than on the top. We all know that, right? But we're looking for that S curve in bikini, okay? So again, when you have somebody that can look at you and look at you objectively, that's really important. It's really important because you know you look at the things and you pick out the things that are wrong with you. Every competitor does it. It's part of our nature because we want to be better, so we look at the things that are bad and want to make them better, <laughs> right? <laughs> Any questions on this stuff so far? So again, I say all of this because you have to understand that what you see in the mirror or what you see on your, your, your recording or whatever, that kind of thing, you focus on things that the judges don't focus on. The, fo the judges focus on something else, right? That hip push out, working on getting out of that bad habit. Yeah, you're one of those that, that push through the hip. Yeah, you're one of those that push through the hip. And again, what that did, and I showed you that during our posing session, that made you look bottom heavy versus when we pulled you up nice and tall, you look balanced from top to bottom, right? Once we pull you up tall, all of a sudden now your upper body looks like it's balanced with your lower, right? Very informative. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad this is helping. I want to make sure that um, I, I answer any questions that you guys might have too as I'm going through this. But again, this is why it's important to find good coaches that can help you see the things that you can't see yourself. You get so close to your own frame, you get so close to your own body that sometimes you can't look at yourself objectively. It's very hard when you're in prep and when you're going through all of this stuff that's playing with your hormones, your emotions, all of this kind of stuff to really look at yourself with an objective eye. It's very difficult to do that. You know, this is, we talked about this when we were talking, doing the wrap ups of the shows this past week. You know, it's, I think it's imperative to have a coach because they can see these things that you can't see yourself, you know, and then you can just put the blinders on and just full steam ahead. And if you trust your coach and you've picked a good coach, just full steam ahead, right? And know that they're going to display you in the best possible light. One of the worst things I see happen with clients my clients, other clients, all that is they get too much information from too many different people. They'll go to five different posing coaches, right? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're just going to end up with a really mismatched kind of presentation for yourself, right? Hire her for posing, ladies, if you haven't already. Yeah, you're one of them that I fixed. I'll give myself a, a, a pet, like, what am I doing? A pat on the back for you? <laughs> you're one of them that I fixed. <laughs> And you look phenomenal, look phenomenal, right? I agree, yeah, another one that I fixed right there. <laughs> all, my, all, my, all my wonderful students are here on this live. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> yep, prep goggles are so real. Don't know how what I would do without a coach. Absolutely. Like, I say that all the time. Like, I, I know what I'm looking at, right? I, I know what I'm looking at, but when I look at myself, I can't see myself how I look at all of you as my clients. I see you guys objectively. I see myself very subjectively very subjectively. I look at you very objectively, right? Sean's the best. Oh, you guys are making me feel so good tonight. I'm getting all these compliments, you guys. Like, hmm, brush my shoulders off, man. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Hired yesterday. I'm so excited. Yes, I can't wait to work with you too. I'm su super excited about that. So, you know, this is my goal, you guys. I, I want you to be able to just let go and let me take over right? Let me tell you what to do. I promise you, I have a track record of success. <laughs> you know, I have so many girls that do so, so well 
when they work with me, that's my proof that I know what I'm talking about, right? I promise you I will lead you down the right direction because I, it, it's my name put on your body. I mean, just just being honest, right? And all you got to do is just do what I tell you to do. It's really, really not that hard. <laughs> yeah, Sean, fixing you up. I never thought of the stallion and I got good feedback. Yeah. I have work to do still, but I'm looking forward to continuing to improve. We all have work to do. We all do. Every single one of us. Every single one of us has work to do. But the fact is, you put the work in. That's it. Sold. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the fact is, you just put the work in. And again, when you hire somebody who knows what they're looking at, who can see it from those angles and those vantage points that you can't see it from, that is the peace of mind that you have, that you can literally just turn your brain off and do what I tell you to do, and you're going to look great. And you're going to look great. You know, the ones that have an issue are the ones that can't trust, that can't, that can't just let go and do what their coach tells them to do. Those are the ones that have the issues or the ones that, that bounce from coach to coach to coach to coach to coach. That's also a problem. Because this is a subjective sport and everybody sees things just a little bit differently. And just because one person sees it one way, another person sees it slightly differently, they can both be right. They can both be right. So what happens in your head is you get a mishmash of those three, four, five different people and a confused mind does nothing. Right? So pick your people that you're going to listen to and stick with it. And stick with it. And one of the reasons why some, a lot of us are very good coaches at posing and vice and just coaching in general is because we go to the people that are rewarding you. We go to the judges and we get feedback and we listen to what they have to say and what they want to see. We pay attention to what they reward, right? And then we bring that to you. Right, then we bring that to you. You gotta pay attention to the trends. You gotta pay attention to what's going on. You know, one of the things that's changed a lot this year, uh, wellness posing has changed and evolved a lot over this past year and it's going to continue to because it's a relatively new division. So we're gonna see that division and the poses change. I'm already posing people differently now than I did at the beginning of the year because the, because the division standards are changing as far as the posing is concerned. We're seeing more of a set criteria, so we have to adhere to that. Bikini posing has changed immensely over the last year. Went away from those big, huge, wide open lats to more of a softer S-curve that we were just talking about. You have to pay attention. And there are, there are some of us out there that do that. There are a few of us <laughs> out there that really pay attention to the trends and pay attention to what's being rewarded. So pay attention to us and what we bring to the stage for you. Because that'll tell you everything you need to know. Right? Because again, you can't see yourself the way that the judges see you. The judges see you differently than you see yourself. Okay? Any questions? I want to leave it open for a couple minutes for questions. And this is a good topic I'm going to put up onto our YouTube. So uh, I will download this one and edit it for the YouTube channel too so you can go back and watch it. And like I was saying earlier, for those of you that were not on at the beginning of this, uh, our YouTube is growing. I want to keep it growing and keep it growing faster. So. We are almost at 600 subscribers. Once we hit the 600 mark, then I'm going to award a free posing session to somebody that's on our subscriber list and is commenting on the videos. So you need to be watching and commenting, liking, subscribing to our channel. Um, and then once we hit that 600 mark, I'm gonna give away a free posing session. I'm gonna do it every time we get to a new 100 followers, okay? Till we get to that thousand, that thousand K mark. Like I told you guys, Figured I'd be giving away more than one posing session. <laughs> so I'm going to do it every time we hit a new, a new milestone. So keep commenting. Every time you comment, that enters you in again for another time. Okay. Uh, keep sharing. Keep doing all of the things that I'm asking you to do because the faster we can grow, the more posing sessions I can give out. And the more you can put what I just showed you into action for yourself. Right? 
I think we got, let me see something really quickly. Oh, there's a question that came in. This is how often to pose an off season. So I'll go ahead and um, and respond and reply to that. I've actually never done that before. Can I just hit it? How do I do that? Oh, there we go. I don't know if that came. I don't know if that came up on your screen. That's the first time I've done that. <laughs> so, um, Carrot asked how often to pose in the off season, and I'm not really strict on on posing uh, times, a lot of, a lot of time that you have to invest in posing onto your, your off season. But I do expect you to pose like every other day. So, you know, four or five days a week, that kind of thing is great. You can see it. Awesome. Cool. I've actually never done that before. So that's the first time I've ever done that. So yay. <laughs> so when you're in off season, don't just let time go by and not pose. If you want to pose every day, great. That's, that's totally fine. But I think if you do it like every other day, I think that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a good method to be in. I'll say for myself right now, I pose about three to four times a week. And each time I do it, it's about 20 minutes, half an hour right? So, and I've been doing this for 12 years, so I still pose. And that doesn't really count because I pose every day with my clients. So I'm not doing my own posing. I'm doing your posing, but still I am posing every single day for hours on end. <laughs> so I'm a unique scenario, but I would say just for me and myself or for my competitive journey, I personally pose probably about three times a week on average, 20, 20 to 30 minutes each time. And I think that's that's pretty good when you're in off season, um, because that keeps you still working and still working on your what you need to work on and what you need to fix and just getting more comfortable and confident, so you don't feel like you lose it. It's kind of like riding a bike, you know what I mean? Like you won't completely lose it, but it'll take you a while to get it back if you don't consistently work on it, just like anything else. Just be consistent about it, right? How far in advance did you get a posing coach before a show? First time competitor here, so. I really think that um, getting a posing coach right away, like once you've decided to start competing, getting a posing coach right away is really important. And here's why. You're going to start posing on your own. Once you've decided that you're going to compete, you're going to start getting up and posing. You're going to go look at YouTube videos. You're going to watch, you know, other people pose. You're going to try to pose like them, that kind of thing. And you're going to start making bad habits. You're going to start creating bad habits. You're going to create bad muscle memory, stuff that's not really flattering for you. So I do recommend that once you've decided to compete, that you hire a posing coach. Now, that's not saying you have to go meet with that posing coach every week. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is hire a posing coach so that you can get a base posing routine put together. It's going to change. It's going to change when you get into, into prep. It's going to change as you go and you move along and your, your physique progresses. But a good posing coach can pose you even when you're in off season to best suit your frame. So then that way you start creating good habits and you start posing correctly. Get a posing coach now. Once you've made the decision, do it now. And again, you just have to do a few sessions till you feel comfortable, like you've got some poses you can work on, a routine that you can work on. And then, you know, if you want to check with your posing coach like once a month or something like that, that's great. Check in like once a month, make sure you're building the right muscle memory, make sure that you're doing the right things so you feel like that you're moving ahead in your process. The one thing that most people leave till the end is they leave their posing to the end. And I think that's a huge mistake, huge mistake. Start now so that once you get into prep, you're already good and all you gotta do is fine tune. All you gotta do is fine tune at that point, right? Oh my God, that's exactly the mistake I made. See, there you go. I got gotcha, you right there. Made the mistake right there. And this is why I need to win the free session with you. There you go. Well, get out there and get that uh, YouTube channel growing for me. And maybe it'll be you. <laughs> All right? But yeah, it's for real, I think it's important, like I said, especially when you've decided to start, you're going to start looking and you're going to start paying attention to different competitors. But, you know, don't build that bad muscle memory. Get with somebody who can pose you initially so that you start with good habits. Okay? Trying to learn from IG and YouTube and not a coach. This was 2017. Yeah. Yeah. When I started, there was no such thing as 
social media like that we had myspace and bodybuilding.com that's it <laughs> there was no there was no facebook stuff there was no instagram stuff there was none of that so and there was no competitions anywhere posted on anything uh, i think i found my did i find my i found my first coach on bodybuilding.com and she had put together a book and i bought her book and that's why i hired her as my coach because that was the only information I could find anywhere. <laughs> so uh, I actually had somebody from the get-go, I had somebody working with me on my poses. From the very time I started to compete, I had a posing coach. She was my full coach, like she did all my nutri nutrition and diet and, uh, and training and my posing from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Definitely a mistake. I have learned so much from Sean. Good, my coach provided YouTube videos that were outdated, yep, mm-hmm. That happens a lot. Do you work with European posing routines too, like IFBB World Championship Body Fitness? So you're talking IFB, IFBB Elite? Um, I haven't. Uh, I understand the posing there, but I don't really don't really work with that federation. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, I I try to uh, I try to keep things even keel <laughs> if that makes sense I hope that makes sense <laughs> got it thank you <laughs> appreciate it <laughs> um yeah and the posing is entirely different it really is the posing is entirely different for the IFB elite it really is so that's why a lot of times when girls come from the IFB elite into the IFB pro league the posing has to drastically change because it is very different. It is very different. Okay. And on that note, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I'm going to let y'all go and make sure that if you want to work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you got to go. Uh, again, we do hair, makeup, suits, and posing. We have a Sundays with Sean day for November. It took me a little bit to find which, which weekend was going to work best, but it's the 14th. So right after the Mid-Atlantic open, we're going to do... Um, 14th, right? Yeah, 14th. We're going to do a Sundays with Sean on the 14th because we have quite a few girls that are competing in the Ben Meter and the Battle Royale the following weekend. So I wanted to get a group posing class in prior to that weekend. So I'm going to open that up on my calendar tonight. So if anybody wants to sign up for the Sundays with Sean on the 14th, we will have one then. And other than that, get over to my YouTube. All right. Oh, and live stream tickets for Cutie Scarf and the Stage. Those are available as well. You can drop those down in my link in my bio here and uh, grab yourself a live stream ticket. All right. And with that, I hope this was helpful. I appreciate all of the love tonight. I got all of these compliments tonight. That was so nice. Thank you. My head is like, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 8.15 with another hot topic. All right, good night, you guys.